pray for me this morning and I know that it's getting a little bit late and Lord do bless you. Try my best just to stand just a couple of minutes and we got time. See if the Lord would use me and hope that hope for the time that I'm up here that you would look to the Lord a little bit. I don't know your case this morning. I don't know where you're at with the Lord. That's I don't even know what's going on in your life, most of you today, but I'm telling you there is someone who does. I would like everyone to ask yourself, I don't know your case, I don't know anything, but if you would ask yourself where you're at, I believe that you, if you would honestly ask yourself that you would know just where you're staying with God today. And Brother Chad, every ounce of me this morning wants to preach today. Yeah. Lord, don't know which way to go, but my desire is strong this morning, Brother Chad. And, you know, I find myself raising four children in this world, four daughters, Brother Darrell, and they're getting older now, and I've often heard you say, if you ever want to feel like a failure, just raise a teenager. And, and I can understand, maybe not fully, but I can see just where you're coming from, and trying to raise these children and I'm trying to do the best that I very well can brother Chad and try to give them the best advice that I can and I try to teach them I got news we're living in a very carnal world we're living in a world that's yeah. not like in this little church right here with men and women looking to the Lord today and I'm trying to teach them the things of this world a little bit do you know that the Bible it even says that there is an earthly wisdom and there is a heavenly that these things are not the same. And Brother Chad, I would be raising my children and I would be trying to think, how do I teach them maybe not to be doormats for the world? And I would try to teach them to be strong and I would try to tell them things that I've learned in my life. And my, little, uh, my, uh, my children, they would look at me sometimes and my oldest, Kayla, would look at me, Brother Chad, and I would tell her, well, you got to stand up here, you got to do this. And she would look at me and she would say, well, Dad, you know that that's kind of not right, that I shouldn't do that, and I shouldn't treat people like that or talk to this one. And Brother Elisha, I would try to tell her, you don't quite understand how the world works. You need to. Uh, and later on, I would go to my room at night and I would begin to think about things and would think, uh, how, uh, how has this world hardened my heart that my daughter uh, would have to tell me, well, you got to be nice here and you got to do this. Uh, um, Brother Marlo, this thing is not. Uh, uh, our whole lives, the Bible says, like this to be ye not conformed to this world, uh, uh, but be ye transformed. Uh, um, brother, and I got news, this world's going to try to steal uh, uh, and rob every ounce of you, everything in you. It's going to try to harden your very hearts. Uh, uh, but brother, and thank God that uh, uh, maybe through all the chaos of this life, looking to the Lord, uh, uh, maybe goodness would show through Brother Darrell, that may be uh, uh, goodness and kindness. Uh, uh, maybe, uh, maybe it would uh, 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 begin to show through. I, uh, uh, all weekend long, I wanted to get down on my knees and tell, uh, 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 thinking about, Lord, I don't know why you would bless me ever, God, uh, 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 because I don't do hardly anything for you. Uh, uh, I don't even know why, uh, uh, why you would give me any blessings or anything in my life. All weekend long, I just wanted to sit on my knees. Through Daryl's whole prayer, I just wanted to cry and say, Lord, Lord, why do you still continue to bless me? Uh, yeah. Why do you give me more than uh, more than I could ever repay already if you stop blessing me right now? And uh, as I begin to uh, sit on my knees, uh, uh, the story of Thomas began to come to mind. Lord, and uh, uh, after they took Jesus and they crucified him, uh, 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 and he come back and he showed himself to his disciples uh, and began to talk to them. And they began to tell Thomas, uh, he, uh, Jesus came back. And he, he spoke appeared. to us. <laughs> he appeared to us and he looked. And Thomas looked at him and said, I know what you're saying, but unless I see for myself yeah. the yeah. holes in his hands, unless I thrust my finger into his side, I will not believe. And brethren, 
It said, I believe, eight days later, he appeared again. And Brother and Thomas was there this time. And the first thing that it says after he appeared is, Thomas, come over and look at the holes. I take your finger and thrust in my side. And Brother and Thomas looked at him and he said, oh, Lord, my God. And Brother, and he looked at him and he said, Thomas, you believe because you have seen. <laughs> but blessed are those that haven't seen and yet still believe. <laughs> Brother, and I didn't read where he condemned them for not believing at first. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't read where he chastised them <laughs> in front of everyone, but he just told them, come over here, Thomas. <laughs> Brother, and I got a God so full of love that when I deserve to be whipped, <laughs> he, he grabs and he hugs me, Brother Chad, and he, <laughs> when men and women won't forgive you, <laughs> when they would look at you, I got a God who would look at you and say, come here. <laughs> I've got what you need right here, Brother Darrow. Well, guess what? <laughs> Just like he preached, <laughs> old Peter thought he would stand for the yeah. Lord forever. And, and Jesus looked at him and said, he said before the cock crows, he said, you will deny me three times, Peter. <clears throat> he knew all this, but yet his love was greater than anything, Brother Chad. Yeah. You know what? I don't deserve for the blessings that God has given me. No, 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 no. Don't deserve any of them. Fall short daily. Don't preach enough. Don't read enough. Don't study enough. Don't pray enough, Brother Marlo. But every time I come to this man, he would still come and he would still show me love. He would still show mercy down in my life, brother. And I got news. If you're looking for excuses today, you're going to find plenty of them. You're going to look at everything. I see men and women who look at everything and they would blame it on coincidence. They would blame it on every which way. If you want excuses not to come to the Lord, guess what? You're going to find them today. But you know that it, uh, Jesus, he said, uh, 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 by grace are ye saved through faith, brethren, and thank God for that today. Yeah. That it's not of my works. It's not of what I can do, Brother Daryl. No. No. But of God's love and his mercy on me. <laughs> and each and every man and woman, you know. I don't deserve any of the blessings that God's given me. I you could push him away all you want, and God's still going to have love for you today. Yeah. You want to know how you can truly, how you can really be doing the devil's will today is by believing the things that you've gone too far. That God isn't going to hear right. you, because guess right. what, God? Yeah. It threw everything, Brother Chad, thank God. You know, it, uh, he put it like this. He began to speak a little parable about a sower. And he said, this sower, he went out to sow seeds. And he said, some of that seed, it fell, it fell among the stony ground. Yeah. Some fell among thorns. Brother, and I got news, that parable, it represents you today. Yeah. And you are that ground, whether it be stony, or whether it be full of thorns, or whether. But you know, sometimes it says that that seed, it fell among the good ground. And brother, yeah. and it, fall, it, it, it came forth with yeah. great fruit, yeah. some 30-fold, some 60. Brother, and I got news, you are that soil. Yeah. In, your, in your heart today, it's like Brother Chad preached, it's your heart today. And how you want to come, and if you want to give it, if you want to take heed to anything that's been preached to you today. Because I got news, <laughs> before I ever took the stand, the gospel was already preached. And if you wanted yeah, to be saved, it was right. already preached unto you how to get it. <laughs> All I'm doing is just trying to add a little bit more. Guess what? I don't stand up here and preach to you for money today. I stand up here because uh, something, uh, God gave me something out in my heart so great that that brother and I would cast everything aside <laughs> and want to stand right here, Brother Daryl, at this world. <laughs> when I get myself in the right mind frame, it can have these, uh, the things of this world, brother, and just give me him. Because <laughs> guess what? When men and women, they'll turn their backs and they'll disappoint you. Yeah. This man will never leave my side. That's right. Through everything that I can try to put him through. As often as I get mad at my children, 
I would look and I would get down on my knees and I'd say, Lord, how do you not stay mad at me always? Because I disappoint you far more than my children would ever disappoint me. I'm telling you today that God, he said to cast your cares upon me, for I care for you today. You know, you know that I'll tell this little story and I'll get out of the way, you know, I, about everybody knows my story and about 16, I was, when I was real young, I was raised right in the church and brought to church every weekend, but about 16, I thought I was going to go into this world and I was going to show it, I was going to show my family that I would make my own path, that I would blaze my own trail, that I was smarter than them, that I knew a little bit more. And I guess at that age, we all think we know a little bit more than we do, and in my case, a lot more. And um, brother, you know, at 16, I run away, and I begin to uh, uh, go out into this world, living just outside of Detroit, and I would stay just wherever I could, found I had to uh, take my share of sleeping in cars many a time, Brother Marlo, with uh, uh, whoever else was run away at the time, and uh, uh, a bunch of us would stay just wherever we could get, and uh, uh, Brother Chad uh, uh, lived that lifestyle for a little bit, and things will begin to wear on you and begin to grow. Yeah. Yeah. That pleasure of sin for a season, Brother, and it ran out really quick. And I found myself in a world, brother, and that would take it, that would steal, would cheat, would do anything to get over on me. <clears throat> the ones that I would call my friends, Papa. Yeah, I, yeah, I often thought after you wanted to see how, how good of friends we were, take a $20 bill and drop in the middle of us. Uh, uh, when none of us had a dime to spare, and you'd see how good of friends we were at that time. And brother, after so long of that, brother, and I would begin to think back. I would begin to think about uh, uh, all the church service I sat through, brother, and all the things that I was taught in. I would find me a little dark corner, and I would begin to pray. And brother, and you want to talk about not knowing what to say, I would just pour my heart out. <laughs> and, I just, and I just put it to the Lord like this. I said, God, I said, I know if I die right now, I'm going to go to hell. I, I said, and I'm afraid that I love what I'm doing out here. As much as I get mad, I have no confidence in myself, Lord. I said, God, would you send something my way that would change me? Would you just send something? I said, because I'm not going to do it myself. God, send something my way. Brother, you want to talk about blessings. When I come back to the church, and Brother Thomas, every time I would come down here to Kentucky, I would come up to my mama sitting over here, and she would just begin to cry. And she would hug me, Brother Marlo, and she would say, I'm like, I pray. I cried myself to sleep praying for you so many nights when we didn't know where you were. I asking the Lord if he would just go and be with you since we couldn't. I thank God that it says that the prayers of the righteous they do availeth much. But guess what? Even, even a greater love than Mama over here was already on the scene. Already right there with me, Brother Joey. Because every time trouble would come and I would get scared, I would begin to think back to all, to all the sermons I heard, Brother. And I would hear a little voice that would never leave me. And it would continue to talk to me and it would tell me, Mike, what are you doing? <laughs> Mike, you know I made a better way. <laughs> Why don't you go back home? And brother, and I would try to drown that voice as much as I could. <laughs> but brother, and the constant in my life was that voice. Yeah. Above everything else. You know, I would pray like that. Lord, just send something my way. Yeah. You know, and I would get great relief. I would get great relief from that, but in the morning I would just go back to living the way I was. Yeah. Yeah. You want to talk right. about praying from the mouth out, but thank God. Yeah. Thank God he was listening to someone. Yeah. Thank right. God he was listening to something because uh, one time I had a friend of mine come to me and he asked me, he said, Mike, you want to go get a haircut over here in the yeah. city? And brother and I went with them there and uh, we pulled into an old rundown kind of shack and on that and on the side of it it says Moses' barber shop. 
uh, uh, brethren, and I just walked in there, and uh, everyone just kind of, it was just an open room with two barber chairs or three, uh, and everyone just kind of sat there, and I felt awful awkward, and I just kind of uh, took my seat, and I began to listen to them, brethren, and they began, uh, one by one, they began to talk about the scriptures of God, and they began to uh, uh, go through and ask everyone, what do you think that scripture means, and <laughs> I just kind of sat down in my chair a little bit trying not to be seen. And brother, <laughs> that man, he always asked me the same thing every time I walked into that barber shop. <laughs> he would look over at me at, <laughs> and he would say, Mike, what you been studying on? And I'm brother, and I would think, who in the world are you talking to? <laughs> Don't you know what I was just out doing in the streets earlier today <laughs> or yesterday or all weekend long yeah. asking me yeah. what scripture I've been yeah. reading. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but something, uh, something in that man's voice, something about that place yeah. threw me back. I'm brother, and I went week after week. Every week, I set an appointment. And thank God they had the longest lines ever because you'd sit there for two hours waiting to get a haircut. But for all two hours, that man, he would look, and sometimes he would stop in his chair, and he would grab him a little book, and he would hand it to me, and he'd say, would you mind reading me a little bit so that I can keep cutting hair? And brother, and I hated speaking in school, but brother, and son, Something in my heart wouldn't yeah. deny him. Yeah. And I said, sure, I'll read for you. And I would just read the scriptures. And every once in a while, he'd say, stop. He said, what do you think that one meant? What do you think they were yeah. talking about? <laughs> and brother, and one by one, everyone would jump in the conversation. <laughs> there were no denominations in this place. Yeah. There was no. Yeah. But guess what? We were, 90% of us, probably that was the only church we were ever getting through the week. Yeah. <laughs> well, brother, and we would begin to discuss it. And every week I would leave that place. I even started to bring another friend of mine, and one time we were leaving. And I looked over at him, and I said, I don't know what it is, but every time I leave there, I said, I feel something. I feel different. Yeah. And he looked at me, and he said, almost like you feel cleaner. Yeah. And I said, I said, I know. I said, I don't know what it is, but that, that, that describes it pretty good. But you know, and what scripture is put like this, it says that. It said the a, uh, angel spoken to John again. And it told him, he said, uh, for the Lord, he's spoken to John again, and he said, go unto the angel. And this angel, he's going to have a book in his hand. Yeah. And he said, I want you to take that book, and I want you to eat it. Beautiful. He said, and when you eat it, he said, it's going to be sweet, sweet. to thy lips. Yeah. He yeah. said, but later, it's going to be bitter to thy belly. Yeah. Oh, brother, and every yeah. time I went to that barber shop, and the scriptures would begin to be quote. Brother, and they were so sweet. Yeah. They were so sweet to me, but I would lay on my pillow, and I would begin to realize that all that sweetness, I wasn't living that life, and it became bitter to my belly. Brother, yeah. I understood that was the Word of God right there. And, uh, brother, and week after week, that man would ask me, what you been studying on? And I finally thought I'm going to get him this time. I'm going to find me a Bible somewhere. I'm going to pick me out a scripture. When he asks me, I'm going to tell him. I'm going to tell him what I've been uh, studying on. And brother, and he, I went in there awful proud. He sat in there, what scripture you've been studying on? And I spouted mine off, brother. And I thought, well, oh, well, I didn't have to crouch down this week. And brother, uh, I thought I beat him. But no doubt that man, he turned around a little bit with a smile on his face and said, uh, now he's, he's even quoting me scripture yeah. when he's coming, brother. And we'll get, uh, yeah. you know, uh, you know, he knew just what he was doing today. Yeah. It's got God always does uh, speaking to his children. You know, one time he asked me, uh, yeah. I, I just watched him. Uh, he was cutting hair and he stopped for a second. He put his head down and I just watched his mouth begin to move, Brother Chad. And, and when he got up, uh, when he stopped, he turned to me and he said, Mike, you got a few people in front of you. Uh, uh, here, here's all the money I got. Would you go put it in the bank for me? He, he said he said that, and I'll give you a free haircut if you'll do it. My bank's just a mile over, uh, just a couple of blocks. And I said, sure, I'll take it for you, Brother Rich. Yeah. And on that drive, Brother, and I thought there's a barber on every corner here. Yeah. I got no on. money in my pocket. I, this car I'm in, it's not even mine. I've just borrowed it. I have nothing. 
No, whatever I owned is in this backpack that I carry around. I, and I looked at that money, I thought, this man, I've never seen him in all my life. Brother Chad, what's to stop me from leaving? Yeah, he would yeah. never see me again. No. I, I'll just be honest, this is what was crossing my mind. Yeah, this is the life that I live. This is the life that I was living at that time. But right behind those thoughts came a voice and said, yeah. no, Amen. you know you yeah. can't do that. No. And I said, surely I can. And I went and I put his money in. And after I came to the Lord, about a year later, I looked at him. And I said, Brother Rich, I said a long time ago, I said, you, I said, you handed me all your money. I said, do you know what I was like back then? I said, I said, I didn't understand what you were doing. I said, I almost thought about stealing. I said, I thought about stealing your money. I said, but something in me wouldn't let me. Yeah. And that man, he just stopped again, and he began to mouth again. And he raised thank up with God. the biggest smile I've seen, and he said, I thank you for that. He said, I thank you for telling me that, uh, that if God says that something is uh, uh, safe, then it is going to be safe. Yeah. Uh, God told me to give you the money, uh, uh, that my money yeah. would go to the yeah. bank. Yeah. And guess what? Uh, you just told me to always trust in the Lord, uh, and he will be there for you. And I got yeah. news, he'll be there for you today. Yeah. Uh, a little while, I don't know if I've ever told this or not, a little while later, uh, uh, there was a young barber in there brother Rich who I always went to an older barber named Moses and that a older barber he sold this barber shop he sold it to the woman behind him there who owned the salon and uh, Moses he moved on I think to North Carolina and brother Rich was still there and that woman who took over, uh, and she began to come and attack him a little bit and said, you've got to quit uh, 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 quoting the scriptures. You're offending people in the, uh, uh, who go to the barber shop. She said, you've got to quit doing this. And he said, I'm telling you, I'm not going to stop. She said, every time I catch you uh, 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 in there uh, talking about the, uh, the, the word of God, I'm going to fine you $15. He said, well, guess what? I'm just going to take money, and I'm going to set it on the table, and you come take whatever you got to. Uh, but I'm telling you, that's a, <laughs> it. And when goodness is there, guess what? The devil is right there with sure you. <laughs> and guess what? That man, he never stopped preaching the word. <laughs> and brother, and I, I work for a real estate company, and I found him his own, his own barber shop. After that point, he got tired of paying those fines. <laughs> and brother, God blessed him <laughs> to have a, a twice the size barber shop than he was in back then. But <laughs> guess what? Hold on to the world, <laughs> to the word today. And guess what? God, <laughs> he'll take yeah. care of the rest, yes, brother. Yeah. <laughs> I got news for you today that God, <laughs> he loves you today whether you accept him or not. Yeah. <laughs> it's an Still open invitation you. for you whether you want to hear it <laughs> or whether you want to accept it. Well, guess what? <laughs> God's going to keep on loving you. Guess yes, what? Yes. <laughs> you don't deserve his love and guess what he already knows it and he doesn't care he's going to keep on loving you now it's up to you if you're going to return it to him or not I'm telling you that God is the best thing that's ever happened to me and I'm not going to speak to my children and tell them uh, do this, uh, do this, and you'll be successful. Do this, uh, go that way. But the only thing I want my children to know is you better get a hold of Jesus. Uh, you better hold on to Him, because guess what? Uh, it doesn't matter if you're poor in this world, uh, or if you've got all the money, if you don't have this man named Jesus. Uh, but guess what? Your life is not worth having uh, to me, because guess what? Uh, God, He is everything to me. Yeah. And I want them to be everything to my family. Yeah. yeah. You brothers go on and Amen. get you a song. You close it out. For a minute. <laughs> Brother Rich, he knew just what he was doing. Yes, he did. He may have never stepped foot in a pulpit in his life. Yeah. And he's done more preaching than I could ever even attempt to. God, he will use each and every one of his children if you'll let him today. And I'm telling you, if you don't know this man... You can question everything in this world. But if you don't question, you know the scripture says like this, taste of the spirit and see if it is good. I'm telling you, if you would just try to taste my Lord, if you would just try to accept, to hear what the preachers are saying, God does the rest. I'm telling you, the minute I opened my ears and opened my heart, God did the rest for me. It wasn't a great mystery. God's already got your puzzle solved.
involved, you just gotta go to them. The church doors are open.